been too long, two and a half years since uh, we've had a Donny Bash, but so glad, we're so glad that you let a little, kept a candle in the window and uh, remain here with us. Here we are in Grand Center. We have a great program tonight, lots of topics, maybe too many topics as it turns mm -hmm. out, but what else is new in St. Louis? Let's meet our panelists, starting with Sarah Fenske from St. Louis Public Radio, who's sitting in for Wendy Weiss, who couldn't be here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Fenske. One of our founders from stltoday.com and the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Mr. Bill McClellan. <laughs> Another founder who was there at the beginning in 1987. Now you hear him on KTRS. You read his work in rawstory.com and the Riverfront Times, Ray Hartman. <laughs> And the guy who did such a commendable job, maybe too commendable the last three weeks, ladies and gentlemen, from the St. Louis American, where he edits the news and writes that sports column, give it up for Mr. Alvin Reed. I do want to mention at the outset that 9PBS is carrying the January 6th hearings in their entirety, and that will start at 8 o'clock. So... Since Donnybrook last week, Bill McClellan, the president of the St. Louis Board of Aldermen, Lewis Reed, resigned, and he joined two other members of the Board of Aldermen, John Carlos Mohammed and Jeffrey Boyd, in doing so, all of them indicted for bribery. The mayor of St. Louis took to the stage in a press conference this week, and she said, kind of acting like the cheerleader of St. Louis, I don't know. She said, you can expect more indictments, and we only hit the tip of the iceberg. So, what do you make of this? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, having grown up in Chicago, <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I, I, I have a hard time getting outraged at public corruption. <laughs> and, 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 and seriously, when I read the indictment on this, it sounds like there were two players. One of them was John Doe, and mm -hmm. the other one was public official number one, who was not indicted, and the three fellas who were indicted, uh, I thought John Collins Muhammad came off as kind of a kid who wanted to be a player, and I thought Jeffrey Boyd, the alderman, uh, I, I had sympathy for him. I mean, he had his car fixed for nothing, and it was a 2006 Impala. <laughs> I, yeah. mean, I mean, it, it made my... 2013 Honda sound like a new Porsche. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean if, if Jeffrey has been a crook for years, he hasn't had much profit on it. Yeah. And, and I thought uh, Aldermanic President Lewis Reed came off surprisingly naive. You know, and one of the rules in life is never trust a stranger who calls you brother. <laughs> and, you know, here was uh, John Doe putting his cash in a cash counting machine and saying, here's $2,000 cash, my brother. Mm -hmm. And Lewis Reed saying, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, it just, I, I just didn't get the idea that these were experienced guys on the take. So mm -hmm. if, if I was on the jury, I think that Hal Goldsmith, the assistant mm. U.S. attorney, would have a hill to climb. I, mm. I, well, if I was on the jury, they'd be thrown under the jail. Um, I, I just, look, if Alvin Reed has enough money to bribe you, which is this little <laughs> piece of money that they were all just turning on the people of the city of St. Louis for, that makes it even more disgraceful. Um, I don't think you can make light of 
they're individuals, they're this, whatever their circumstance was. The fact of the matter is, A, they broke the law, but two, they betrayed the trust of the people that, that voted for them. And I'm still, this is the one that really sticks with me. Okay, as silly as those recorded, you know, conversations are and all that. But, okay, being a uh, minority business enterprise is up for sale. What does that say to every hardworking person? small black business person, woman business person, you know, minority business person that's trying to do the right thing and, and be right. And here's the president of the Board of Aldermen said, like, oh, yeah, I'll take care of that for you. And then meanwhile, the ATM machine is clicking for $2,000. That's what y'all are worth, St. Louis, $2,000. That, like, that's pathetic. And, I mean, you should go to jail just off of the, the general just indignation that you have for the people that elected you. Yeah, I mean, Bill, you here and what I see is just it's so casual because they're so used to doing it they didn't even do any hemming and hawing and soul searching and should I take this and do I try to hide this it's just this has become a way of doing business in some quarters of the city and that to me is is reprehensible well, well I, I thought that uh, public official number one who may be the uh, target and maybe the person that the mayor was talking about, about more indictments to come, he seemed like a player. I mean, you know, when uh, John Doe, who also seemed like a player, offered, you know, $10,000 just to meet with this public official, and in cash, and the public official returned the cash and said he wanted checks, two checks <laughs> to his pack. And I thought, that's a guy who's used to this. And, and then he didn't cash the checks because he probably had enough sense to Google John Doe and see that he's under federal indictment and think, I don't want any part of this. And, and the other fellas not even bothering to look into the guy giving him the money. I just thought it isn't business as usual for these well, guys. I'd like to remind my fellow founder, first of all, public official may not even be a he. We don't know that. So we, let's be not a gender thing. I mean, a you know, pronoun <laughs> thing, but he, we don't even know if John, who that person might be, he or she. I, I will say this. I wouldn't assume that this is the extent <clears throat> of what these three gentlemen got. You know, this is what they got caught for. So the idea that, well, it's just a couple of thousand. We don't know that. We can't say for sure in any direction. <clears throat> what I wrote about this week is I do feel there is, and I will say it very carefully, there is, it does not minimize in any way the crimes for which these guys will have now pled and will be punished and should Haven't be pled, punished. But, but have resigned. <clears throat> well, have resigned and are obviously going to plead. And, and doesn't minimize that. But we ought to be thinking as a, from a 40,000 feet about the fact that we really should not have a political system built on quid pro quos. That we should not, because in effect, even if they stay on the right side of the line, the John Doe's who can range from little small town criminals like this to big folks, you know, in executive suites who are doing it all by the rules, the rules are terrible. And the entire pre premise that if you're in office, one of the things you either should do or that we should somehow condone is that if somebody gives you campaign money, if somebody gives you something of value, mm -hmm. and, and obviously 99% of our politicians are not corrupt enough or stupid enough to take cash, okay? But they'll take jobs for a friend. They'll take all kinds of things that are legal that effectively have the same basic structure. I give you, you give me. You, it's a, it's sure. a quid pro quo. And so I say we as a whole culture need to reevaluate yep. the fact that there's a lot of John Doe's out I, I, The thing is, Ray, though, uh, we've known about things like this for a long time. You know, uh, Tony Messenger from the Post-Dispatch has written stories about how Lewis Reed mm -hmm. back in the day was against the public support for the Scott Trade Center until right. the Blues owners gave him about $150,000, and he changed his view. And the same is true right. with Mr. Reed when it came to a North St. Louis uh, I guess a homeless shelter called Biddle House. He was for it until an attorney in town who was against it gave him a $5,000 donation. That's what I'm and then he about. changed. But the thing is, the voters knew this, or they could have known it had they been reading the Post Dispatch and following the stories, but it didn't really matter. Well, that's did it? my point. And I think until we have a sense of 
and I doubt that we're going to. The Supreme Court is certainly not going to help. <clears throat> I think until we have a sense of outrage about the fact that that conduct you described is perfectly legal and acceptable to people, I think we've got a problem. And again, it doesn't take... A, the political corruption cases like this deserve to be prosecuted. Let's do now, it. Now, now, you said something last week. I, I wasn't here, but I enjoyed the program because I followed it on our uh, podcast, as everyone can. Um, <laughs> last week, you didn't think that Mr. Reed, for example, should resign. And I agreed with you because, you know, there's the Attorney General of Texas... I believe his name right. is Ken Paxton. Yeah, he's still. He was indicted seven years ago, and, and he's he, still fight, fighting the charges, and he just beat George P. Bush in the primary. And this is also going on, what we're talking about here in Cincinnati, where there's a guy named P.J. Sittenfeld. He's a member of the city council there. He was indicted two years ago. He didn't resign. We, didn't we learn from Bill Clinton that you fight these charges? Well, you, you, I, you well, don't well, resign. Well, I, I didn't say he shouldn't resign. I said he shouldn't have to resign. In other words, it's, there's oh, a big difference. Oh, I got the impression you no, thought he should I, resign. No, the, 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 I said the, the, he should not. If he wants to fight it or wants to make his deal, he has the right to stay and do it. I'm glad he resigned, but I did say that he just because if, somebody's indicted, the rest of us shouldn't say if resign. If he's maintaining his innocence, why is he resigning? Well, he, well, he's well, not. Let me put out a little St. Louis history. Uh, we had a aldermanic president, Tom Zish, who was indicted by the feds in 1987 right. in the cable TV trial, and very prominent people indicted with him. Jim Cullen, who was a big lawyer, lawyer for the blues, uh, Leroy Tyus, uh, Gene Slay, mm -hmm. and I remember going, you know, going to their trial, and it was held at the same time the Dennis Bullock trial was going on. Do you remember Dennis sure. Bullock? He, he <laughs> uh, it, tied up his wife, he met his wife, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Reminded him. In, in an RFT. Uh, oh, he met her, he met her and, 11 months and, before he killed and, her, and they and, still blamed and, us. And Julie, Julie was tied up <laughs> in, in the garage, and he set the garage Let on fire. Go. And it was a bondage thing. And, and I remember that trial was very right. popular. Was but I thought, <laughs> I've waited so long for the cable TV trial. I got to go to that. And during one of the breaks, Gene Slay, one of the defendants, came up to me and said, what's going on at the Bullock trial? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this is a defendant, it, and he's more interested in I'm at the wrong trial. <laughs> right. And, and Zish, the uh, president of the Board of Aldermen, was acquitted. So you never know who's going to be acquitted and convicted Yeah, but in this, in this case, I mean, we can see these transcripts. We but see the cash counting machine. We see Lewis Reed say, thank you. There's a reason this man resigned. Well, There's sir. not a good counter argument well, here. Well, it sure There's seems that way, but it's, 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 anything less than just, just total disdain for what they did. I mean, I, I hear you that they need to be punished and all that, but this ain't about how we do business it in St. Is. Louis, and this is not about that. This is about some corrupt individuals, and the second we start deflecting away from that is the second that the next person say like, oh, see, they don't care. They don't care if you steal, because all they'll say is, oh, no, they do it at uh, Civic Progress, or they do it over here. Well, guess what? Maybe they do, but they ain't going to jail, all right? And let's not lose track of just how filthy this whole thing is. I mean, it's just disgraceful. That's well, it is because the the losers really are the taxpayers. Because what these guys were doing, they were selling city property at a huge discount, or they were giving away tax breaks. That's tax dollars that otherwise would have gone to the kids and the schools the school and the district. mental health sure, counselors no and whatever. That's so, why they need to go to jail. Okay, well, let's uh, move then from the city to the county, where Sarah, <laughs> Tony Weaver, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what his title is or was. It was Change Management Advisor for the St. Louis County <laughs> Jail. Right. And now everyone's running to their dictionary looking up that term. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I'm going to tell my son to become one, whatever it is, because they started $85,000, apparently. Uh -huh. But this guy, um, he wasn't bribing, but he was trying to defraud the government of money that was intended for small business relief. And he was working with the same guy, we think, although I think his name was like John Smith, not John Doe yeah. in the county, according to the uh, indictment. Yeah. And he was filling out all these fraudulent applications for government relief during the pandemic. So, who, aside from Tony Weaver, who doesn't look like his future is going to be going 
very well in the near future. Who else is the big loser in this case? Well, I think St. Louis County Executive Sam Page is a huge loser in this case. What he did is he brought on this man who'd been working for uh, County Councilwoman Rochelle Walton Gray, and she ended up uh, getting voted out of office. This guy needs to be picked up and given a patronage job, so Sam Page steps in and gives him a job that should be of the utmost importance to the taxpayers. The St. Louis County Jail is a mess. There's huge problems there. The people who work there have been underpaid for years. And here's this guy who's brought in to help manage change. And instead, he's running around town talking to John Smith or John Doe or whoever this guy is and trying to help him defraud the county because, as he says, there's so much money here. we got to get our hands on this, cool. get his hands on this federal dollars. It's terrible. The idea that this man would be in a position where you know, the jail needs reform. We need somebody who's gonna take this seriously, and instead we're gonna give it to somebody who worked for a council member just so we can curry favor with their constituents. It's not I, I, a good look. Absolutely, and Sam Page does own it, although I have to say one thing. I've always been for city-county cooperation, and John Doe, you gotta <laughs> hand it to him. He's, he's kind of bringing us together, you know what I mean? In a lot of ways, he's showing you don't have to have a merger to work together. <laughs> um, but uh, it's not in a major case squad or something. Yeah. No, um, but the, um, uh, I, I do think Sam Page will, you know, I don't know if he'll have any consequence to him, but this happened around the same time. The, the, a lot of this happened. They wanted uh, Rochelle Walton Gray to stay around long after her term expired. It was a bit of a controversy <clears throat> where she voted I believe for Lisa Clancy to be the next uh, chair of the co uh, county council against rid of her days. That ended up going into a legal dispute, which ended up with Ritter her, her days being elected county council chairwoman. But when you look at that benefit that was involved for presumably Sam Page's mm -hmm. administration, you know, it really, uh, his statement uh, is, is really, uh, unlike, uh, Tashara Jones, who made it, and I realize it's a different situation, but I thought Tashara Jones had such an elegant statement uh, after the, uh, what we were talking about before in the city, in the case of the city, mm -hmm. Sam Page did his usual, like, just pretended like it wasn't about him, and it was very much about Sam Page. Well, well you know, one, one difference in this is the three aldermen in the city were elected. Right. The, what, the bad guy in this was put in by Sam Page. I mean, and it's sort of the way Sam Page does business, to curry favor with a political favor, you know, with Hazel Irby, uh, when, you know, she thought that she should be the uh, county executive. So he said, well, how about if I give you a $70,000 raise and I'll make up a job in diversity for you, Hazel. And th then when he was having when he wanted to curry favor with Rochelle Walton Gray, he went to Tony Weaver, her assistant, and said, how about if I give you a $40,000? He, he takes public money and throws it at people for his political benefit. I mean, Sam Page looks terrible in this, as does Lisa Clancy, who, you know, is my county council person, who I thought we were electing a strong young woman, and first thing she does is abdicate the county council's oversight responsibility and says, we'll let Sam do this. And what does Sam do? I mean, there's people looking very bad in this one. In both sides of the border, like Ray said, expediency, I still get with that, about getting that money out now, where it went from there. And I can't defend the appointment of, of, of Tony Weaver. Crooks is crooks. Maybe, <laughs> you know, you could do a little bit more due diligence or something. I, I you know, I don't, I don't know. I will say that, like, you know, we were talking about, oh, well, you know, this is how stuff was done and maybe needs to change and, and all that. But it's nothing new that people curry favor by right. appointing people to, to different positions. This one blew up in his face. Yeah. But that does go on all the time. And I don't think necessarily, like, if you, if, if you, if you appoint somebody to a position, okay, and they do a great job, all right, nobody asks, well, why did that person get appointed to that position if they do a great job? When they don't, then it's like, ah, oh, why did you appoint that person?
But it was noticed that no money was lost as a result of this scam. And correct? Sam Page did fire this guy. Like the minute the indictment came out, you got to give him credit for that, Bill. <laughs> oh, I, I do, I do. Although, you know, you, well, you, look, you look at people's past, and uh, Tony Weaver, who was with Albert Walton in the uh, Northeast Fire Protection District, scandal, and somehow, you know, Mr. Walton, who was Rochelle Walton, Ray's dad, uh, you know, Mr. Walton never went to jail, on, was never indicted on that, but the court took that away from him, the Fire Protection District, and he was disbarred. Mm -hmm. and, and Weaver was right in the middle of all of that. So when Sam Page gives him an $80,000 job as a change agent in the <laughs> jail, I mean, you go, wow, I don't know what he's I, doing. I, I, I would be the, curious as to what's, excuse me, uh, what, what alternative Sam Page had to firing him. I mean, I don't think there was. I mean, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, wait. Well, you no, said that's why they like, call it change wait, management. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> now, just like you said, like, oh, he didn't have to, you know, it's like you said, oh, no, they didn't have to. If he didn't want to resign, he didn't have to. Right. I mean, he could have just, like, he could have yeah. yeah. just relieved him of his, not his duty, but he said put him on administrative leave yeah. until I you were tried. I, no, I, he summarily fired him. But, and I just it, had to add it, this. I One of the greatest conversations that you could no longer have in a newsroom with somebody on the telephone because, you know, you can't speak to people like that was Albert Walton and myself one time when he compared us to your newspaper. Uh, <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I think we all had our money to him at one point or another. And, and he said it in, in, in very crash terms, and I... <laughs> Let him know what yep. I thought about that. Yeah. Hey, and, and okay. I, I, Come I, on, I, Alvin, I, tell I, us about that conversation. Yeah. We hey, I, I, I'd like to make something yeah. clear, too. Even though I'm very down on Sam Page, right. uh, you know, bad governance is, you know, I'll probably vote for him because he's hired a number of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and, 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 and all, all, that, all you know, politics is local. Yeah, I respect and, that. And, you know, I respect that. Uh, okay. I think it should be pointed out that Sam Page is not the first county executive to make political appointments. Yeah, El no. well, no El doubt about that. El El no Elvin. doubt about Elvin. that. Elvin, only one of them went to jail. The um, <laughs> Metrolink, uh, there's a proposal that the St. Louis Business Journal reported on today that apparently the mayor of St. Louis, Tashara Jones, and the CEO of Bi State or Metrolink, Talby Roach, have agreed on a north-south route for a Metrolink extension. It'll start at Jefferson and Chippewa. It'll go north, eventually land at Natural Bridge, but along the way, it'll stop at the soccer stadium, a hotel at Jefferson and Market, and won't go too far from the National Geospatial Agency. You in favor of this project, which will be about two-thirds of a billion dollars? Well, if somebody would, like, give me a whole bunch of money to change my mind, I might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, have you con I, contacted I, John I, Doe? I, I, John Doe is probably a little yeah. busy right now. <laughs> right. He, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, right, he's going right, to be getting deposed for the next three years, probably. Uh, no, I've always thought it should, it should run east-west. Now, it's not because I'm a suburbanite, uh, but I am. Okay, but when I lived in, in Washington, D.C., and they were expanding uh, the metro, you know, service there, one of the things they, they first wanted to accomplish was getting the people uh, who would use it, okay, and, and hopefully Steve, St. Charles will get on board. Um, but, uh, you know, if... I just think that if you ran it, for all the talk, oh, nobody's doing dangerous, oh, blah, 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 blah. If you ran it east and west, okay, that thing would be jam-packed every morning with commuters. And I think your first step to paying for the other lines is to get one line running that is absolutely, positively profitable. I'm, and I think you can guarantee that if you run it east-west. I am very in favor of this. I think the north-south idea. I think North-South, we do have East-West. I mean, it's obviously for a lot of reasons that are political and other reasons it doesn't really go where it should. Um, but I, I think, you know, instead, and I know it's popular to kind of beat up on Metrolink, but I have to tell you, I think running North and South and particularly along the soccer stadium, the big issue is getting it to have enough traffic. And don't underestimate the NGA site, particularly if we could ever figure out how to develop around it, because the NGA site's a really interesting thing. This is, a lot of people don't realize, it's moving from the South City to North City. Right now, it's a fortress in South City that isn't surrounded by anything. Just a fortress where spies go to work and go home, you know? And, and I guess that's right there. And, and North City 
in North City, there is at least the possibility, if they can ever get their act together, mm -hmm. to build around it and really, the only way it's really okay. transversal, but, uh, and, you, and this is important than that. Have you, looked, have you gone yes, up to the side? it is important. Because it's a fortress with nothing around it. I right know, now. but it could be, and, and no, you know, it Ray, needs to be, and this here? would be part of that. Y you know, they have a half mile surrounding that uh, <coughs> fortress that you can't develop on, so I, there's that. But Number there's two, there's no density along the route that we're describing but, here. And the people are in St. Charles. I mean, that's where the, it's, it's the fastest yeah. growing county in the state. Right. The city is actually losing population. No question. We were told that Metrolink would increase it, but actually, since we've had Metrolink, we've just lost population the, the entire experience. And there's a, there's a bigger problem with this line, and that's that middle class people love light rail. They don't want to ride a bus, but they'll get on the light rail to go to the soccer game. Great, you're going to get that like 20 times eight, a year. Yeah, 20 times a year. And in the meantime, we have cut bus service to the bone in this town, and the people who rely on it to get to work. They don't rely on the light rail, they rely on bus service. And right now we're not funding that at the level we need to fund it for it to be functional for them. It's a huge problem. This is not gonna solve that. Agreed. Well, let me ask you, Ray Hartman, about uh, former governor, uh, Eric Reitens, who according to Emerson <laughs> College's poll, uh, Emerson College, by the way, has uh, what famous former Tonight Show host as its alum? Jay Leno is the answer oh. to that. Okay. Uh, so Ed, the, uh, <laughs> Ed McMahon? Ed yeah. right. <laughs> McMahon went to Boston College. Yeah, I knew right. that. I knew that. Right. Well, so the latest poll has um, Eric Greitens at 25%, 19% mm -hmm. for Eric Schmidt, the attorney general, and then about 16 or so percent, 10 right. points behind Greitens. Vicki Hartzler, the congresswoman. Uh, this hasn't changed. Every week well, it's the same deal. It, first of all, it's very dangerous to trust polls at all, much less this far out. Uh, they are all within the margin of Trump, okay? They're within the margin of Trump, meaning if Donald Trump does an endorsement, which I predict he will, and I do that with some trepidation because I'm almost always wrong with predictions on these things. <laughs> but if Donald Trump, as I think he will, picks, I, I think he's, he's limited, he's only going to pick winners now. I mean, he's, he's picked some losers, but he is, his ego is such on a race this big, he's not going to, he's going to pick who he thinks can win. I think it's going to be either Greitens or Hartzler, because I don't see him endorsing the same candidate as, as Ted Cruz. Hadn't happened yet in a national race, and that would hurt Cruz. I think it's going to be Hartzler or Greitens, and, it, and I think in a Republican primary, whether we like it or not, that'll make the difference. That's Ray, after what happened in Georgia, how can you say that Trump can pick winners? What he's doing is he's following his base. He's not leading them. He's putting up his yeah. finger in the air, trying to figure out which way they're going, and then he's trying to glom onto that. He, he didn't do that in Pennsylvania with Dr. Oz or Who Mr. Barely won. Barely won. Barely no, won. I said he didn't do it, but yeah. but the point is he, he brought him back from the dead. So my point is he but he he did it. Yeah, and particularly Doug Mastriano and, and the governor there is a particularly controversial one he did. He's going to do what he thinks is right for Donald Trump. And mm. I think that I might, if I had a guess, I think it was Greitens, but I could be wrong. Obviously, I'm rooting for Greitens because I think he's the one candidate that the Democrats can beat. But, okay, well, let's talk. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I'm disappointed that, that Greitens is doing so well. And I, I, I have said before, and sincerely, that if I could pick a winner in the re, in Republican primary who I think will go on and win, I, I would go with Mark McCloskey. Just, <laughs> you know, just, just, just because, no, just, just, just because M Mark McCloskey, you know he's going to do the wrong thing, but... <laughs> But he believes it's the right thing. <laughs> no, I mean, his, his dad led the fight against Floridization, and M McCloskey is of that mindset. The others, I think they all know, I, I'm sure Eric Schmidt does, that what he's doing is the wrong thing, but he's going to do it anyway. I'd rather have a guy who does the wrong thing thinking it's the right thing. Mm. I, mean, it just, I, I would argue just, Vicky Hartz is your like candidate. More, more moral <laughs> position. Now let's talk I'd about, go the, with Demo Vicky if let's I talk about the Democrats, uh, Sarah, and Trudy Bush Valentine, who's mm -hmm. I think running for her first office, uh, is being criticized by a couple of groups in the Riverfront Times for not actually showing up at Democratic functions. And uh, one wonders, uh, is this a 
successful strategy, or could this be a successful strategy to kind of ignore people who are voting in the primary? So I'll say, I thought it was a good story the Riverfront Times did, and I get that progressives want Trudy Bush Valentine to meet with them. They want to ask her questions, and they want to catch her on video saying dumb stuff. I don't blame them for wanting to do that. I think she's kind of smart to avoid those meetings. If there's a small progressive group, what good comes to her out of sitting down with them and getting trapped into saying something that whether it hurts her in the primary or hurts her in the but, general but, election, that's not a good strategy. But sir, that's part of it. I mean, that when you're running for office, yeah, well, I'll go speak with some small group and they're looking for, you know, they like the other person. I understand that. I read that story and I just felt, I kind of felt sad for her because I just felt like, boy, somebody talked you into doing something that you really don't want to do. Right. And exactly. I think that's just sad. You but know? when you're the right. better funded candidate in a primary, do you want to like do anything to mess that up? You just kind of want to lay No, she's low messing it up now. There's an 8,000 the word ads. story in the Riverfront Times. All you had to do is show up and, you know, yeah. eat some more d'oeuvres and say like, I'm cool. with you. And, and, and should have called them like brother and sister, you know. Well, well, you my know, brothers, this, my this, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> right. in, in, in 2022, I think television is all that matters. I, I mean, Eric Greitens is winning the Republican mm -hmm. primary, and he won't talk to anybody. Yeah. All he's got is some TV ads. And I think Trudy Bush Valentine, like you said, well, figures. Well, can I say something? First? So TV. I think you mean by TV. I hope you mean the internet because. TV, per se, is pretty obsolete. I mean, um, the, the, the no, online no, advertising. How you doing? Hey, 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 no, the, um, <laughs> let me rephrase that. I'll but tell you what, though, you're right. That, that AM radio is really going crazy. AM radio is really less realm. <laughs> I say, you know, and we should disclaim this. I'm just a communist, a columnist for the Riverfront Times. I'm not, I don't have anything to do with the paper. In that, although I thought it was a good story. I think the broader question is, I disagree with your uh, characterization of, of uh, Trudy Bush Valentine running. She's barely even gotten up, I mean, much less walking. Oh. And, and I'm serious, she is not running a campaign that anybody can see. She is refusing to, I, I know from Lucas Kuntz's folks that they've challenged her to debate all over the place, and she won't debate Lucas Kuntz. And it, it'd be one thing if she was a safe front runner who'd been out there and didn't need to, t to dignify some little candidate, I'd get that. She's never run for, we, nobody, I, there's a whole list of people who I respect who have endorsed well, her, and we don't even know, I mean, I think matter. she'd be a good, I would much prefer her as a senator to any of the Republicans, just because she's a nice person and she's a nurse and she's decent, but I mean, the point is, no, I, I, I agree. I, she has. She's, I, I would say if she's not right. willing to fight for this, don't, then Lucas Kuhn should get the nomination. At the same time, don't you think that uh, Jane Duker, who's asking for a debate with Sam Page before their primary in St. Louis County, should get at least one? Sure. I mean, I think that she should get debates. I agree. I, and I, I agree. I, yeah. And but but in this case, she hasn't been willing to even go to mainstream party things. I mean, it's one thing to your point. Mm. I don't disagree that she doesn't have to show up every time somebody's got a, a right. you know a cell phone to video video. But the point is, she isn't okay. participating. No, neither in, does okay. Eric Reitens. Well, I mean, he doesn't well, go he, to any. But he's from. he's not even coming to Missouri. He's staying out of Missouri because his whole okay. campaign is nationally funded. Uh, he has no reason to come. Well, to Missouri. Uh, he might get deposed if he came back to Missouri. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> No, Alvin, you're what right. you make? Speaking of not showing up, Bob Onder, the state senator, and a very controversial one, pulled out of the St. Charles County executive race this past week, after, and uh, he pretty much leaving Steve Elman as the uh, likely winner in that Republican primary. Any explanation for what happened there with Senator Onder, who got as much ink this past year as any senator in Jefferson City, that's for sure. Yeah, but a lot of fingers are getting pointed at him for wrecking the session for the Republican Party. And, and not that I care, but, you know. <laughs> but he, you know, he's kind of like Eric Schmidt. You know, they were their own worst enemy. And I think, I think Eric Schmidt could honestly, possibly, be a little closer in that race, okay, if he just hadn't pulled all these shenanigans over this past school year. He lost some moderate Republicans. And some people that may have supported 
under before all that what went down in mm. Jeff City, this legislative session. Once I think he counted the cards, he says, I'm going to lose, so I may as well save my money, you know. And, and well, let, let, let me say, one of the two candidates came to Donnie Bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did. Well, I, I, think, I think that says something about his confidence. Right. <laughs> well, I will say this. Okay. I disagree with the esteemed St. Charles County Executive on most things, and he would be happy to put that on his resume. But, <laughs> but uh, this was really important for the region, that somebody who is decent and honorable and trustable is going, in all likelihood, going to maintain his position as St. Charles County Executive, because I would submit that his opponent was none of those things. Hmm. And I would add that you know, I'm not going to speculate about why this guy, after raising a quarter of a million dollars and being reasonably within striking distance by most people's measure of winning this, you know, I, I guess it, it's it's cool that he he must not have realized he had a family six months ago when he announced. No. <laughs> Alvin Reed from uh, St. Charles to downtown St. Louis. The uh, Interim Public Safety Director Dan Isom has announced that scooters are going to be banned, at least for the time being, um, because a lot of kids are using them, running around downtown St. Louis on these scooters, and in some cases getting into trouble. Two teens, one 13 and the other 14, were shot between 8th and 9th on Pine on Saturday night, and that's not the first time. And a lot of people think that the scooters are leading to mayhem. However, some of the reports indicate that the scooter companies themselves, despite the ban, are still operating their scooters in uh, downtown St. Louis. Right. First, I, I felt like Chris Rock there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a distraction. <laughs> All right. No, take it out on the scooter company. Like, just, hey, and, and this doesn't have to be the police. This could be like your local tow company. Hey, get a flatbed truck, grab every scooter you see within the city limits, throw it on there. We can take it to the dump if you want to. We can hold them <laughs> hostage. Then charge the scooter company, find them for everyone that you pick up, and just make them impossible to do their business within the city of St. Louis. I don't think you can blatantly break the law like that, obviously. And I think you said, ah, oh, there's more scooters than they know what to do with. Well, I think, like I said, that doesn't have to be law enforcement. That has to be like a McClellan Reed adventure where, you know, like, yeah, you know, we just like, hey, let's just get a whole bunch of trucks and go pick them up. Right, and take pictures of them. Like, hey, you want your scooter back? Right. Well. I mean, who am I to interfere with this scheme? However, I would point out that the story that KSDK had, and it was a good scoop, it came just a couple days after this edict came down. These are out-of-town companies. They have a skeleton local workforce. Give them a couple days to pull this together. And, you know, these problems downtown, these are problems downtowns are having across the U.S. right now. People are working from home. They're no longer going to these office buildings, and downtowns are suffering. So there's problems in St. Louis. I don't think they're unique to St. Louis. Right. And the scooters <laughs> won't. Taking the scooters away won't fix it. The, it may help. Right. right. But, but, it, it's but not they, they, they right. have tried a lot. They yeah. tried to uh, put up those Jersey barriers. Yeah. They tried to mm -hmm. cut off the bridge traffic from East St. Louis. They cut off Lenore K. Sullivan Boulevard after 7 o'clock. And now there's talk of possibly about a curfew, Sarah. Um, KMOV had a story taking a look at one fellow who lives in the City View apartments, and he, like others, have seen too many bullet holes in the side of his edifice. And so now they're talking about maybe a curfew for downtown St. Louis. Now, Boston had a curfew during the pandemic. Mayor Lori Lightfoot in Chicago has a curfew for parts of Chicago right now. Do you think a curfew is due in downtown St. Louis? I mean, I can see the merit in it. They've got to have some tool they can use to tell these kids, get out of here, get lost. Like, we can arrest you if you, if you stick around. We don't have to have a cause beyond the fact that you're here. They need something like that, because right now these kids have run amok. Uh, downtown residents are really fed up. In general, I'm anti-curfew, but if ever a situation warranted it, it seems like this is the one. I, I will say this. I am not, it's not a matter of being anti-curfew. There's, if any prod, prod uh, issue has been studied to death in this country, it's curfews. There are thousands of studies that have been done. You can go to Brookings, you can go to the National League of Cities and look, and overwhelmingly, and we're talking about curfews for crime, not COVID, overwhelmingly they do not 
work. They do not, you know, they, they're well-intentioned, well-intended. This is not a philosophical thing. As a matter of practicality, not only do they not mm -hmm. work, but study after study shows that violent crime, in, the only increase on cri impact on crime is a slight increase in the, in the hour after the curfew goes into effect, that they go up. Now, the fact is, they just don't work. They have other side effects. They increase uh, unpleasant interactions between uh, police officers and young black kids. And there's just no question that that isn't a great thing in and of itself. And a lot of times there's kids that might be coming home from work or something that, that, that you know, why should they be pulled? Just the fact that you might be pulled over as a teenager, as a suspect, that you're coming over is, is just the, the things that can go well, wrong well, go I, wrong. We, we, we don't have enough police don't. anyway. Yeah. I mean, and, we're, and it's we're, a bad we're, use we're, of police we're, force. We're short on police and to expect the police to be right. stopping and picking up kids who are 15 and 16, and then what do they do with them? Uh, Take them to the station? It, it's but I don't, I don't think they're gonna be proactively going out and picking up these kids. It's more when they have a pack of kids causing trouble, it gives them a way to disperse the pack. Let's face it, nobody's this, doing proactive but, policing in the city of St. The, Louis. The other I, mean, I agree with you, I, I, I agree with you, Sarah. There, look, it's, it's kinda like, all right, you can put up a sign that says don't trespass in this part of the woods or, or something, and people are gonna just walk right past it. But if it stops a few people, okay, then, then you benefit from it. And I don't care about Brookings or anybody else in any other study. They could say it didn't work, but if it saved one life, and if it saved one kid's life, then it was worth doing. No, okay? they don't. They actually no, say no, 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 it no, no, costs no. lives, no, no. Alvin. Well, well, I just don't believe that. Well, I okay? do, and I'll tell you what, I, I just don't the, other, the reason, as a practical matter, the reason they found that curfews don't work is that they take law-abiding people off the streets. And the fewer law-abiding people... No, wait that, a minute. We're talking let, about let me finish. teenagers. We're like, talking they, about... No, I'm not... I'm telling you that when there are curfews in general, law-abiding people and their kids are more likely to get off the streets there are few witnesses, there's fewer crime. activity, wait, and that breeds more crime. This is man, just wait, what happens. Wait, wait. This sounds like it's what right happens. Now. Did Marshall Dillon do this study? No. I mean, I, what I, is this, man? No, no come it's on. not a study. Right. It's consistent <laughs> findings that you can be, a, if we want to argue it academically, fine. The uh, fact is, it doesn't work. It's been proven well, I, not no. to work. Right. Well, I, in the Channel 4 piece, Donnell Walters, who's with the Ethical Society of Police, said his opinion that the parents have to start looking out for their kids. Oh. Well, and no one's arguing about a, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, there's no one saying you should, the parents shouldn't have a curfew for their kids. We're talking yeah. about whether the police have a curfew for your kids. I mean, mm. of course parents should, yeah. but that, that's not, you, when, you, right. when you take more okay. people off the streets, you get more crime. Okay. Right, the problem is there aren't people on the streets of downtown well, St. Louis to begin with. That's okay. the whole problem. Well, they're well, already gone. Uh, we, should, we should have a curfew barge that's parked on the <laughs> Mississippi and run them out there for well, a night. Actually, <laughs> Jeff, that was I'm Jeffrey kidding. Boyd's idea. Yeah, right, right. No, he did. That was his idea. To John, have John no, I'm kidding. Right, yes. right. Throw, hey, him, throw him Sarah 10. Fensky, <laughs> I want to ask you about uh, Bob Seafood. After oh, 44 yeah. years, it closed up last... Uh, yeah, this yeah. is terrible, isn't it? Any Bob Seafood fans in our viewing <laughs> audience? Yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of a problem, I mean, because the University City fathers and mothers, in their wisdom, were using eminent domain to get a Costco, and uh, there is going to be a Costco across the street, but Bob's had been there for 44 years, paying taxes, and uh, people thought the seafood was fantastic, and yeah. it's just kind of sad, it's the same week, actually, that Bayer's Gardening is going out of business after yeah. 81 years. And you would think that somebody like would say, okay, I'm gonna step up to the plate. I know it's not really the role of a mayor or county executive, but these are civic treasures. Let's help them. What do yeah. you think? I mean, these are local businesses doing amazing work. You can tell from the reaction here today. And then their own government runs them out of town, favors some big out of town project that ends up decimating the neighborhood. You know, the government of U City said they wouldn't do eminent domain, and there's of course some asterisks on that where they said they wouldn't do it for uh, you know, residences living in their own building. Well, a business that have, has been there for more than a decade building a business there, how do they not get the same treatment? I think it's appalling. I, I, okay, I, I hear you, and I wish it would stay forever. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of businesses out there that say, like, man, I've been around a long time, and this happened or that happened, and nobody came to, to help me. So, I mean, I, I feel for, for those involved, and I have been there, okay? And I just, I don't know 
that other than like we always say like, well, who, who approved this? Because they need to be voted out of office. And you got time maybe to vote them out of office and maybe say Bob Seafood. I think uh, it's too late for that. Well, you know, when, when the government says, we're not going to use eminent domain. Just the fact that it's out there is enough of a club that if a businessman is trying to negotiate, somebody says, I want your property, and you know that there's even the threat of eminent domain, it makes the negotiations unfair. Well, yeah. uh, I, I think the questions of a Costco, whether it's this one or others, or any kind of other development, is separate from what should we be doing about helping generational beloved businesses. I'd like to think there'd be something the business community ought to be doing. I don't think it's the role of government. I mean, I can well, tell it's you. it's the government that's knocking it well, out, but, right? But I don't By think, allowing I will domain. tell you, as somebody that's seen, you know, uh, those about risk and reward capitalism pretty much on both ends, I'll tell you, it's, that's what it is. It's risk and reward capitalism. It, there's a tendency to say that because this development, but for this development happening, these guys would be fine. We don't know that. We just hmm. don't know the variables. There are so many things that change because of online. And, and, and online, of course, I condemn it for taking away the importance of public television. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it doesn't. <laughs> no, I want to be clear about it. No, but I, I just want to say that, that I, I really feel like it's, it's not quite... And I'm not necessarily okay. in favor yeah. of that Costco project, but I think, particularly like with these nurseries, there's a lot more to businesses succeeding and failing. I'd love to see the business community have a fund or do things that would help those kind of special businesses, you know, and that's a role of the business community, not the government. Well, well it's oh, the I government think. that's knocking it out. It's the no, government I'm just saying you, eminent domain. It's not the business it's, community's but fault. But that's, you're oversimplifying the plight of a, of a, of a, of a Bob Seafood we all like. It, it's that you don't know, we're talking okay. about that one, but you best, the nurseries weren't eminent domain. No, that's it? correct. That's so correct. My I would point just is they, remark how sad it is to lose a great business. It is sad. Business. It is okay. sad. Okay, I'm not buying any fish online. By <laughs> <way>. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You, you, you can do that now. I know. I, <laughs> hey, this is the time that we would like to ask you for your questions. And uh, Dee Dee and Sydney have microphones. And if you're in the audience and you'd like to pose a question to the panel, this would be the time. Maybe you could just raise your hand. And uh, here's one in the second row to my left, your right. Um, we'll take care of. This gentleman over here. Oh, I, th I think it's Bill from Rock Hill who's got a comment. Bob, like, <laughs> it's been a long time. I was going to say Bob from Rock Hill. Man, haven't while, heard from Bill it? from a while. Yeah. Hey, Bill, good to see you. When are you guys going to bring back your turn? I know it disappeared during the pandemic and it stayed gone. When is your turn coming back? <laughs> we don't know. I, I think those decisions are made at a different pay grade and above I, I don't want to like punt that question but that's not our decision and I, I enjoy interviewing the guests I will say that. <laughs> we've I had do. some great guests and we've had some great callers it's a tough one maybe we should go hybrid <laughs> how about another question oh this is Yale Hollander long time viewer first time caller <laughs> Do I need to turn my volume down? Yes. No, you need to turn your TV off. I, I have an infrastructure question for you. Earlier you were talking about the North-South Metrolink line and, and uh, you know, how complex that can get and whether it's really needed. Don't you think the better alternative for mass transit in this region is more trolleys? <laughs> That's hilarious. Right. And I, would, I, I believe I, I would agree, except we can't get to one we got to work. You know, like, uh, man. <laughs> Yale, Yale, by the way, did stand-up comedy on the loop trolley. He, what's, what's, and, yet, and the trolley still failed. Well, and he actually continued to do it while it wasn't running, which was really amazing. <laughs> you know, that was the one night they had people on that trolley. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> And by the way, he produces at the Gaslight Theater. He does. How about another question? Hi, my name is Rich from Belleville. Question for each of you. If, maybe when, they make a movie about Donnybrook, what actor do you want to portray you? Also, you cannot say yourself or each other. And Sarah, you're allowed to answer for Wendy. Oh, goodness. <laughs> What actor portrays us? Yeah. Well, obviously for me, George Clooney. All right. 
<laughs> I think Wendy should be played by Christine Baranski. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Michael Jordan, the actor. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the basketball player, right. I'm smart than he is. <laughs> Uh, I, I think pretty clearly Tom Selleck is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who do I go with? Oh, shoot. I don't know. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. <laughs> it's, it's a great question because finally Ray is speechless. <laughs> After you know, 35 was, years, there's was, a first for everything. When I was younger, it was Al Pacino. But I oh, yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, actually, he was, he was here. <laughs> Think about that Somebody, one. We've got yeah. another question or comment. Hi, I'm Patty from Kirkwood. This is for Alvin. All right. Alvin, I see you at PJ's getting carry out all the time, but you never eat in. Why is that? First of all, I cook most of our meals, okay? <laughs> and I do. I just like, but every now and then it's a, uh, you know, carry out time. Well, well and you... also, during the pandemic, okay, and you could not, you know, carry out food, I was like most Americans and found out like how much money I was spending on not eating at home. So and I, I learned that so like, hey man, you gotta like, you know, cool down on them, them, them carry outs. All well, time. okay, but if you come to PJ same time, we'll treat you, okay? All right, that's it. Wait, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. no. 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 That's that, wait, Jay, no. Right. Okay. <laughs> Throw in ten. Jay, no. Is that yeah. ha that's Hal Goldsmith seated behind her. <laughs> okay, uh, gig from Kirkwood. Let's keep in mind that St. Louis now has a nonstop flight from here to Frankfurt. And in the basement of that huge airport, there is an even larger train station. So now people in St. Louis can fly nonstop into Europe, go straight down below, pick up a train, and go almost anywhere in Europe, much more convenient than almost anything we've had in years in St. Louis. I, Ladies and gentlemen, that's Gig Gwynn of Gwynn Travel. Yeah, and I, th I, 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 I thought you were saying we had a big train station under the airport here, and I was <laughs> like, damn, I well, missed that. Well, yeah. may I point out also, Gig, Darn, sorry. Gig has is one of nine human beings on the planet to have visited every single country on right. planet Earth. What? Yeah. Wow. wow. How many? How many people? Nine. Nine. Wow. How'd they count that? <laughs> Start flying. Start flying. We have another question. Uh, I'm a, a retired accountant, so this will not be a fun question. <laughs> Uh, our local uh, electric utility, Amarin, is getting into a lot of fights with the EPA and looks like they're going to be closing power plants uh, pretty soon here. Uh, who do you think is going to get the short end of the stick on this deal? I, I usually it'd be like, you know, what's the saying is somebody's got to pay for all this stuff and it's you. <laughs> right. So, I mean, ultimately, it'll be consumers. I mean, I, I guess if there's less electricity, if they're producing less, then they got to make their money, and they will try find a way to make their money. Keep in mind that these are, are publicly traded, you know, entities, and so as much as you and I might not like it, they answer to the people that have stock in them, and you know, that's why I have stock in them. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe a topic for next week's yeah, program. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Another question from our audience. We have another one. Um, hi, I'm Donna from Florissant. Um, Bill, I noticed you're really dressed well tonight. <laughs> and I wondered, uh, who chose your outfit for you? Well, the guy at the tuxedo rental. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I didn't know, I, I was thinking of getting like a magneta color or a turquoise color, and I thought, I'll just go with a classy, basic, royal blue vest and a white jacket. It's looking good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. In the words of Don Marsh, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> 
You look marvelous, Bill. <laughs> okay, I think we have time for one, maybe two more quick questions. And I see one back there in the, uh, in the VIP seats. <laughs> Take your time. Oh, we got a battery problem with the microphone? Hi, I'm, oh, here Neil. We go. <clears throat> I'm Neil from Wildwood. Hey, Neil. Um, I'm a former pharmacist and hospital administrator. I'd like to have your take on the legislature passing the ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine issue, <laughs> and also not allowing pharmacists to question physicians about the reason that they're prescribing those two drugs for COVID. Yeah. There's another question for next week. Uh, you, you, I, you know, I, I, I thought that thing about giving horse medicine to people, you know, that's one of those things in the legislature where all those in favor say nay, and people went, nay. <laughs> <laughs> nay. Uh, I mean, our, <laughs> our last question comes from Evie in the front row. Is this song? Okay. Um, I have a question for my grandfather, Bill McClellan. All right. <laughs> so, since we're on live TV, there's like one answer for this. Okay. Can you take me to Crown Candy and I can get three big figurines? Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll be going to Crown Candy. <laughs> Great question, Evie. That's a yes. That's a yes. That's a yes. <laughs> Can we all go? I'm afraid that's all the time that we have for tonight's show. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks for making uh, Donnie Bash 2022 our best yet. Thank you. Stay tuned because Channel 9 will air the January 6th hearings in their entirety. And that's next on 9 PBS. Thanks, everybody. Donny Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.